Hi, this is the Bet Central podcast. Let's make some profit. Hello and welcome to another Mastos Masterclass with myself, David Kapil at Capilino on Twitter slash X, and our favorite Panta Mastos. Yeah, let's um start over in in La Liga with <clears throat> a nice simple bet where we have Osasuna versus uh, Villadelid. And um, it's going to be an over 1.5 goals. Um, just simple as that. And uh, <clears throat> the reason being, um, these these two teams, in terms of their goal um, stats, I think maybe there's not uh, much to discuss in terms of their uh, the actual league position. Osasuna is doing better than um, Villadelid. Villadelid. They currently um <clears throat> they uh last uh oh, not even last uh sorry uh nineteenth which is the second last in the in the in, in the in the log so but there's nothing to to write home about what I'm interested most is um or are the the goal statistics where both teams are averaging two point nine goals so far this season but quite unique stats in terms of goal scored goals considered. Um, Valladolid, on the other hand, they've considered twenty three out of the eleven, which is actually the highest um in 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 La Liga that has been considered, and with them playing away as well, it's gonna add another factor of um not being able to keep a clean sheet, of course, and then Osasuna they also do have quite a unique stat, where sixteen out of the sixteen goals um scored and sixteen goals considered, so you can see that is they also um comfortable in terms of it can go either way, whether they score, whether they concede. So um, it makes us sit in a good position. And um, yeah, that's just what's moti- motivating me here for an over two, uh, an over 1.5 goals. And then on the other end, um, Villa de Lid when they are playing away. So out of the 23 goals that they've considered, 17 of those have been away. And that's why they're averaging 4.4 um, away, which is the, actually the highest in um, La Liga. So yeah, I think this is, for me, it goes without saying it's just an over 1.5 goals. Yes, um, on paper it looks good, even though I'm always a bit worried when La Liga teams uh, are being picked for like gold, gold selections because I they just have a habit of when you need them not turning up. But um, let's hope they will this weekend. Head-to-head is... Six out of the last nine games between um, Osasuna and Valladolid had over 1.5 goals. Uh, so there is a history of goals. And like Masto said, especially this season, um, there's a lot of goals in the games for both teams. He did mention the bad away record of uh, Valladolid. Just wanted to read out the results quickly. 3-0, lost to Real Madrid. 7-0, defeat to Barcelona. 3-1 loss to Celta, 2-1 loss to Sevilla, and last time, a 3-2 over Alaves, a win. So all the games have goals. Um, last three had both teams to score. Uh, so one uh, who wants to be a bit more risky could even look at uh, over 2.5 and both teams to score. But um, let's move to the next game, um, which for me shouts goals a lot more, a lot louder than this uh, La Liga game that we just had. Yeah, of course. Um, because we're moving to the Bundesliga, so um, it, I'm expecting um, quite a, a few goals in this game, where we have Bayern versus um, Union Berlin, and uh, Bayern are playing at home, and the official bet for this one, we're going over 2.5. Even though, um, for me, Union Berlin, uh, I think um, I've 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 seen how this season has gone. It's it's honestly the same as last season, where they are not really um scoring um much much goals. They also not con- considering um much goals. I mean, in the in the La Liga itself, um, without the the cup, maybe you we have that one one against Frankfurt. Um, two nil against Kiel. Okay, that special two one against Dortmund. That one nil against Borussia. But in there as well, you have a zero zero against um um RP Leipzig. You have a one nil against uh, Pauli. You know, it's um as much as this is a goal scoring league. You know, 
just one of those teams where they do not really are uh, playing it in terms of goals. However, they are paired with um, Bayern, which uh, for me, as much as um, company does get criticized um, a lot because of how the 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 form in the in the Champions League is quite questionable. But he has um, scored twenty, or rather, the team has scored twenty nine. Um, goals out of the eight and um, I think the, the second closest is um, Leverkusen with 20 so they've scored nine more goals than the, the closest one which for me it's 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 a bit of a, a ridiculous stat and um, it does support our notion of going over 2.5 goals yeah and then for them in the league officially they've played eight and six of those have been over 2.5 and um, averaging about uh, 4.5 goals. And they've had some of the regular score lines, like a 5-4 against uh, Bochum, a 4-0 against Stuttgart, that 3-3 against uh, Frankfurt, the 5-0 against Weda. You know, um, it's it's a team that's quite comfortable. And uh, especially you add the element that they are playing at home, even though they are matched with a team that, for me, it's a bit low-scoring. But they should be able to uh, uh what you call um get over 2.5 goals here and i think one more thing to mention on the side note is that today it is diwali so happy diwali to everyone so you might hear some firecrackers so just note that it is diwali today so usually they celebrate with uh, fireworks so yeah yeah hear those fireworks in the background there by you yes there's nothing here <laughs> it's pitch black and silent in cape town but yeah um, back to the game um happy diwali obviously off from 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 my side to everybody that celebrates it um but back to the game for out of the last six games between Bayern and union had over 2.5 um those were all games where Bayern were scoring freely um, and I think uh, if you listen to Masters and you see how the season has evolved, uh, it it will mainly depend on Bayern, you know, having a good game, um, which they have had in the Bundesliga. Uh, they had quite a good start on the company. Um, so let's hope it comes through. For the next one, we're also staying in the Bundesliga, but um, not a gold selection this time. Yeah, we're staying in the Bundesliga where we're going for a straight win. Um, it's Frankfurt versus Bochum, and um, we're going to favor the home team, which is Frankfurt. So um, I think Frankfurt would, um, should uh, win uh, this particular game. And one of the reasons, I mean, uh, they are currently sitting sixth. Um, there's no need to mention uh, if it's a European sport or not. Still early um, in the league, they've only played eight games. And then they are playing uh, Bochum, which they are playing them away. And Bochum, so far, they haven't won any games. So out of the eight has been one draw and um, seven losses. And then you add the factor that they are playing away, which it, uh, makes it uh, far much worse. Out of the four games they've played away, they've lost all four of them. 3-1 against Hoffenheim, 4-2 against Dortmund, 2-1 against Freiburg, 1-0 against um, <clears throat> RP Leipzig. So for me... Uh, they shouldn't be able to to win this game. Frankfurt so far, they've only played three at home, two wins, one draw. So it's just one of those where it's um, if they win, it's a miracle. But um, I don't think they they they'll win this one. So yeah, it's just a Frankfurt win. Yeah, head to head also looks good. Um, five, five out of the last seven at home. Uh, Frankfurt beat Bochum. Um, you have to go back to 2007, actually, to find a Bochum win in Frankfurt. And um, like Master said, Frankfurt have started well uh, in the league. They also managed to draw against uh, Bayern. Um, they went through in the DFB Pokal also in midweek. Um, whereas Bochum already have a coaching change. So, yeah, it points all to, to one team. This one... Um, Let's hope they can, you know, turn up on Saturday. And let's move with Masters Fireworks in the background to the Premier League. Yes, uh, the Premier League, 
where we have Bournemouth versus uh, Man City and uh, Man City are playing away and we're just gonna go for uh, Man City to win and um, that's simply because we are getting so much value and it is Man City so <laughs> yeah it's one of those so in terms of the log itself uh I mean, Man City, we all know they're currently sitting fast on the log. Uh, the only team that hasn't lost um, so far out of the nine games they've played, two wins, uh, uh, two draws and seven wins. And Bournemouth mid-table, um, 11th, three wins, three draws, three losses. So I think for, for Man City, even though they're playing away, they should be able to win this game. Uh, with the nature of them not having lost... Um, Yet in the league, it means that their away record is quite good as well. So three wins um, and one draw. So they, they're standing quite, quite good. And I think they should be able to easily uh, win uh, this game um, against uh, Bournemouth. Even though Bournemouth can um, upset uh, a lot of teams. I mean, they are the, the only team who have beaten uh, Arsenal so far. So they do have that um, dog in them, if I would say. But... I think Man City sometimes is just too strong. So, yeah, Man City to win. Yeah, I think Arsenal f fans will look at this game and hope, you know, that Bournemouth can do something similar like they did against them. Uh, but this is a very one-sided affair. Uh, 15 games, 15 wins for Man City. Uh, some quite clear in the last four. The last one was a 1-0, but before that was a 6-1, a 4-1, and a 4-0. Uh, it's those games where you hope, uh, you know, if you play fantasy football, that Erling Haaland scores a hat-trick. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's quite good odds, actually, on, on Betcosa mm -hmm. for this game. You know, for a City win, 1.57, you don't often get that. Uh, exactly. I think it must come because they have a few injuries in their team. But I do think also, um, even with the injured players, they should be too strong for Bournemouth and continue with the strong start they had to the season. Uh, last game for Saturday takes us to the Eredivisie. We don't visit often, but uh, this week's masterclass goes to the Netherlands. Yeah, we don't um, <clears throat> visit that often, but um, it is, it is a, a European league. And uh, it is the, um, the last dance, so I thought uh, maybe we can pick some of the, the heavyweights in that league. Um, Ajax are playing a PSV, and uh, PSV are currently sitting first. Comfortable, comfortable in that um, spot. 10 out of the 10 games they've played, they've won all of them, um, scoring 35 um, out of those. And um, that's why the official bet here is going to be um over 2.5 i mean um ax uh, we we all know the story last season so i think this is it. they're just trying to come back and um finish in a respectable position and obviously try to win the league but i think psv are still so strong like i said 10 out of the 10 they've played so far this season they've managed to um win all of them and um ix as well they 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 quite um they're quite good um sitting second and when they're playing at home, they've played four. And then four out of the four have um, been, <clears throat> they've, they've won, uh, scoring about 10 goals in the process, only considering one. So for me, uh, my gut tells me that. So the, way, the, the, the whole logic of this bet for me is that I think PSV is the better team. They can manage to win this game. However, AX are playing at home, so they should be able to get one in against PSV, which of course will force uh, PSV to show up, so to speak. So like a 1-1, one -one, which will end up in a 2-1 or a 3-1 or a 2-2. Two -two. So that's why for me, it's one of those two heavyweights facing each other and it's teams that like to, to attack. Uh, we see in the number of goals that the, the, uh, both these teams have scored. Has scored PSV have scored thirty five. Um, Ajax have scored twenty. Um, so yeah, it's um over two point five goals. Yeah, it makes complete sense. Um, uh, last weekend Ajax beat the other strong team 
uh, in the Netherlands. Feyenoord, 2-0 away from home. Feyenoord were unbeaten until that point. Um, and they will obviously hope, you know, to do something similar against PSV, but I don't know. PSV just seem too strong. You know, like like Master said, 10 out of 10 wins. A perfect start so far. I think last year they only mm. lost one game across the whole season. Mm, uh, that's quite crazy. They also um, played quite well in Champions League. Uh, they got a one-all at PSG. A one-all against Sporting. And, I mean, Masters will be interested in Sporting more than ever. Because <laughs> the coaches... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think um, this one on paper it, it should definitely cover home. Eight out of the last ten games between Ajax and PSV over two point five goals as well. Um, that's the five games for Saturday. This week's masterclass has ten games, so five games Saturday, five Sunday. For those who want to play on Bet Cosa, our friends who are giving us this last dance, uh, the code is DB six seven G D. B six seven G six point one five odds is not too bad, but let's jump over to Sunday Masters. Another five games. Yes, another five games on Sunday. Um, we we typically do four four. We just thought we did five five for this um last dance. So yeah, we have Atletico Madrid. This is um last pos last Palmas here. And uh, we're going to favor the home team, which is Atletico Madrid. So Atletico Madrid um, to, to win in terms of the lock itself. Atletico are sitting fourth. Um, Las Palmas sitting 18th, which is three, three spots um, uh, away from the, the 20th, which is the last position. However, um, Atletico Madrid in the 11 games they've played so far, five wins, five draws and uh, one loss. So they've only lost once, which came um, recently against Betis, but they were playing away. So far, when they're playing at home, three wins, two draws. So I think it's it's, it's quite comfortable um, when they're playing a, a weaker opponent. Um, they are a team that draws quite a lot, but I think um, in this case, they should be able to win it because um, Las Palmas' away record, it's actually not quite good out of the... Five they've played, they've lost four of them. They they won just one their recent game against uh, Valencia, even though in that game they won three two, which uh, means they did manage to concede two goals either way, even though they they they've won. So yeah, I think it's um one of those no brainers. So it's uh, gonna be an Atletico Madrid to win. On paper, yes, it's a no brainer. Um, with all the stats that Masters has given us. But I don't know. Atletico are a team that I personally is on my red list. Uh, somehow, when you expect them to win, <laughs> they don't win. And when maybe you don't expect them to win, they beat you know one of the stronger sides. Um, just be careful. I'm not uh, disregarding any of the stats that Masters just gave us. Uh, they are there for anybody to see, but I, Atletico are one of the my boogie teams. Um, but head-to-head -head doesn't look too bad. Um, eight out of the last ten games, Atletico beat Las Palmas. Um, so that's obviously oh. also what Masters is riding on. Let's hope, let's hope they can continue with this form. Uh, last game was actually a 5-0 win against Las Palmas, so... Uh, a one no would be fine for us this week, I think. And we are moving back to the Premier League. Yes, we're moving back to the Premier League. Where um, <clears throat> we're going to have Spurs versus Aston Villa and we are going for an official of over 2.5 goals. Um, in this game, I think it's one of those where it's just going to be a thriller. Um, <clears throat> because uh, the nature of the type of football both teams um, play, um, Spurs, they're quite a, an exciting team, and um, they're actually quite on and on and off. But um, Villa, in terms of the lock itself, they are doing much better, sitting fourth, and Spurs um, sitting about eighth. 
but um, we obviously interested in the goals um, stats which um, Tottenham averaging 3.1 six out of the nine over 2.5 same as um, Villa six out of the nine over 2.5 and um, Spurs when they're playing at home for three out of the four and then um, Villa when they are playing away four out of the four averaging 3.5 so I think um both teams they they do especially Villa from from last season I mean Spurs of course but Villa from last season they have been playing um that uh, interesting good football and it shows in the score lines so I hope they will continue um that way especially when they are playing uh, um, uh, away because they do tend to concede a lot which obviously does open up um, the goals uh, conversation so yeah Yeah, it looks good. Um, it's it's interesting that um, Aston Villa have a worse goal, less goal scored and more conceded than Spurs, uh, but have collected five points more. You know, it just shows that Spurs um, are quite potent, but, you know, maybe they're not scoring in the right, right, right games or in the right moments. Um, but yeah, this is a game that has produced goals. Uh, over 2.5 goals and 6 out of the last 7 between those two as well. Uh, last one was a 4-0 win for Spurs at Villa. was quite surprising if I remember correctly. But before that, Villa beat Spurs 3 games in a row. So it's quite quite a competitive fixture. I'm looking forward to this one actually because um, yeah, it was, will decide you know whether Villa can stay close to the top or whether... You know, they will drop off a little bit. Spurs might come higher. Um, but let's move over to France for the first time in this week's Masterclass for the next two games. Yes, the next two games, the fireworks are still going off outside. People are celebrating. It's um, quite, 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 quite um, nice. But anyways, um, yeah, Uber Eats, um, League One, uh, where we have, um, I haven't selected this team in a while, actually. Um, is it Agjo? It is, eh? Agjo. This is Rain. So, yeah. Yes, I'll I'll, say. I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll stick with that. <laughs> I think it's because I haven't been selecting them in a while, so terminology or pronunciation kind of lost me. Um, Agzor versus Rain, um, and here it's over 1.5 goals officially, just as simple as that. Um, Agzor, I mean, 9 out of the 9 have been over 1.5 goals, averaging 3.4. So it's quite, um, quite, quite simple. And I think um, in terms of goals and conceding 13 goals scored, 18 conceded, quite healthy. Um, Rain on the other end. 88 out of the nine um, have been over 1.5. 13 scored, um, 12 conceded. So um, for me, it's one of those simple ones. And I think um, I've had um, a Uber Eats League One um, team so far. And they've all, but to be fair, I have been selecting all, only over 1.5. So, and they've been coming through. So yeah, I'm hoping this one is another one that does not need uh, much justification and it can come for us yeah let's hope it comes uh, I have also liked the French league for goals this season um, there seem to be more than in, in recent years uh, you know like Master said both teams have scored 13 Ren conceded 12 Auxerre conceded 18 so there is goals in both of their games head to head does not <laughs> does not look as promising as in many other fixtures. Uh, only two out of the last five games actually had over 1.5. Uh, there were two nil nils in there, and actually it's two out of the last six. Two nil nils, two one nil wins. There was a five nil uh, in in last season in the first game. Uh, so let's hope uh, they can maybe go back to to that goal scoring form um but yeah i mean if i look at the recent results uh especially from oxe 
uh, there is goals in their games. 2-0, 2-1, 3-1, 3-0, 3-2, 3-0, 3-1, 2-0, 2-1. So all of the games this season had at least uh, two goals, uh, if not more. But um, let's go to the next game. Uh, staying in the Uber Eats League. Yes, we are. Yes, we, we are. are. We are. Where we have Nantes versus uh, Marseille. And then um, here we are, ironically, favoring the, the away team where we have Marseille all um, draw. So that is the, the, the official one. But I think Marseille are good for it in terms of how they, they, they're performing this season. And um, so far they are sitting um, third. Um, <clears throat> Just behind Monaco and uh, PSG, out of the the nine they've played, five wins, two draws, and then you have Nantes on the other end. Um, they've only won two games out of the nine that they've played, so um, I'm hopeful that Marseille can be able to avoid a draw. So Marseille, even when they are playing away, four out of the five games, um, they've managed to to win, and uh, which for some reason they lost one against Strasbourg, but it was um a one nil. A game but they they were dominate, dominating that game but um Nantes when they are playing at home as well um even even though they've um uh, lost once but they have drawn twice and then they've only won once so I think they they're not quite strong when they're playing uh, at home as well so that's why I'm going for Marseille here yeah I hope um I hope they will come back strong because last week they lost 3-0 to PSG and it was like a very one-sided game. Uh, they started quite well in the league but they've dropped now already six points uh, behind PSG. I thought under the Zerbi, especially after how they started, they could be a bit closer, maybe give them you know, a little run for their money. Head-to-head uh, -head does look good here in this fixture uh, with Marseille winning... Six out of the last eight games against Nantes. Um, there's a fixture, funny enough, that has quite a few red cards. Uh, in five out of the last seven games have been red cards. And you know, that's always Panta's worst nightmare. So let's hope um, there's no red card in this one. And Marseille can bring it home for us. And... Um, to bring home this week's masterclass, we are going to Inter to Serie A. Yes, Inter, Serie A, um, for the last one in the masterclass, where we have Inter versus Venezia, and we are going for an over 2.5 goals as the official bet. And I think um, this is one of those, I mean, Inter is uh, playing... Um, at home, so they, they should be quite strong. So far, they are sitting um, second, just na chasing um, Napoli um, there, having t played um, 10 games. They've only lost once, and Venezia on the other end, um, third from the bottom, uh, with only eight points out of the 10 games, and um, at least they've won um, twice, but they've drawn twice, and they've um, lost six times. And uh, when they are playing away, Venezia as well, they're not um, good actually. Four losses and um, two wins, um, oh, sorry, two draws having considered um, a good number of goals. I think it's um, 13. And um, the goal stats themselves, um, Inter, uh, out of the last five they've played, four out of the five have been over 2.5. The same as Venezia, actually, um, four out of the five have been over 2.5. But um, Inter are playing at home, and they're averaging about 4.4 at home. So you have um, also as well four out of the five at home, but they are averaging a high number of goals, which is uh, 4.4, actually. Second to only um, second to only Atalanta. And then um, Venezia as well, when they are playing away, then that's where it gets um, interesting as well. It will support us. Five out of, the, out of the six have been over 2.5, even though they are averaging only three, but they've considered 13 out of the six that they have played. 
So yeah, simple over 2.5 scrolls here. Um, in this particular game, the last one. Yes, let's hope it comes through. Head-to-head, uh, -head, three out of the last five overall. Uh, head over 2.5 and at home um, for the last four games had over 2.5 and inter wins uh, so inter to win and over 2.5 might be a decent selection for this one as well which is the last game of the last dance of the master class um, for those who want to play on bet poser the code is wg Three nine H, W G three nine H twenty five point six two odds, quite nice. Um, hopefully we can go out with a bang, like Master said. We didn't record last week, but the one before we did, and we won. Uh, let's hope we can bring this one home, Masters. Any famous last words, sir? Last words, last words. Um, yeah. Um, hopefully then this is not the last one. Um, for us, um, whether it's on this platform or any other platform, hopefully we can um, get to 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 come back. But yeah, it's been it's been good. Um, it's been nice. Uh, we have um, enjoyed. So yeah, let's just um, continue with it. Let's continue being responsible as well. And um, yeah, till till the next pod, which uh, we we don't even know when it's when that's going to be but yeah till the next one <laughs> yeah we don't know when we don't know how but we'll see we're not giving up at least not just yet uh it has been an honor masters and uh, lots of fun uh i think this runs back three years now or something like that um yeah. but yeah <laughs> before before we get too emotional um bet with what what you can afford to lose you know it's that time of the month payday uh, for many was payday either today or in the last three days you know the accounts are full don't waste it all on betting pay your bills school fees grocery petrol and those things uh, only bet with what you can afford to lose and have fun like masters always says cheers cheers